Welcome to another episode of Jay Leno's Garage. You know, we've had a lot of fun doing TV and movie cars on this website. Uh, we did the Batman car and a few of the others, a couple of the Dukes of Hazard cars. And this is one of the most iconic TV cars of all time. This is a Volvo 1800. This was used in the movie, uh, and the TV show rather, The Saint, uh, which is a hugely popular show uh, when I was way younger than I am now. Uh, I always like these, and we're going to learn a little more about this car. Let's bring in Matt Stone. Matt, how you doing? Matt's been on this website before. He's written a number of books, Steve Jay. McQueen book, uh, a couple of those. What was the last one you did? The last, well, I have a new one coming out on James Garner. Oh, very, okay. very, very soon. And I oh, hope good. we'll be back here talking about it. We'll that. talk about that. Let's talk about this right now. This is, if you don't remember The Saint, these were... Uh, I guess there were books and a hugely popular TV show, a TV show that was popular worldwide. It was filmed in England, correct? Mm-hmm. And, and same with me as you, Jay. I was a little younger back then when this show was on in prime time and watched it religiously along with I Spy and Mission Impossible and all those, those other great spy and cop show TV shows. You know, we need to explain to young people when we were, there was no internet, so if you wanted to see cool cars on TV, you'd just watch certain shows. When you live in a little town in England like I, like I did, anything less than four doors was a sports car. So to see something like this, this, this might as well have been a Ferrari when I was a kid because it was rare, it was cool looking. Uh, there was one in my town and you know, you'd kind of stand on Main Street and, then it, and it went by, it'd be the talk of the school the next day. I know that sounds terribly naive, but that's the way it was back in the day. But this, this car also has uh, more star power because this was, this was uh, Roger Moore's actual car, wasn't it? Indeed it was, and pretty rare that, that the star of the show actually owned the car that was the star of the show. Well, that, you know, talk about low budget, we have to use your own car in the show. And I, I just love that, okay. Uh, so tell us some more about the history of this car. Well, Volvo sports car, as it was, born in the 1950s, and, and you talk about positively exotic, just look at the lines of it. I mean, this absolutely could have been a Ferrari or a Maserati based on the package size and the lines. Front engine, four-cylinder with dual carbs. We'll talk a little more about it. This, of course, an English version. You'll notice it's a right hookah. Right, right. And, uh, and, and just a positively exotic and elegant it design. Looks, it looks almost like it was Fiora, one of those companies that, that uh, did the design. I, that's what I thought. Yeah, very Italianette for a Volvo, front engine, uh, no, nothing as exotic as a mid-engine or anything like that, but uh, nice airy glass line, reminds me a little bit of a Carmen Ghia. Right, right. Yeah, and it's not really a sports car, it's more of a grand touring car, isn't it? That's a fair statement. Yeah, yeah. It's zippy, it handles nice, it's, it's, the engine's very robust and kind of roarty, but yeah, you wouldn't call it a pure sports yeah. car. See, that's the way my mom would review a car, it's zippy. I haven't heard that word used to describe a car in a long time. Because I'm almost as old as you, Jack. I know, I was going to say, boy, it's zippy. <laughs> we'll take some goofballs, get in the car, and get zippy. Yeah, wow. But uh, you know, you know my, my, my biggest problem with this car when I was a kid? I sat in one once. You couldn't put your elbow on, on the window, so the elbow was way up here. Now all cars have the sill up here. But I remember riding in my friend's car once, and we had to go, Ugh. They're trying to meet girls, and you couldn't be cool with your elbow way up on that sill. That was sort of the only problem. Well, you know George, our mechanic here? Like George is one of our master mechanics. He did the Doble steam car. I'm he, here, and he's pretty excited well, right he's now. Well, he's a big, he, he wears his Volvo shirt every day. George, come on in. Come on, here's George. 30 years huh? working on these. Uh, that's right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, this is basically uh, a 122, an Amazon underneath, isn't Suspension it? Suspension-wise, yeah. Suspension-wise, and, and wheelbase and everything? The wheelbase is longer on this, I okay. think. Okay, well, we'll find out. Okay. Now, you, you worked on these. You, you did, made your career working on these. They're pretty dependable, weren't they? Yeah, they're very dependable. It's basically a tractor engine. Right. Um, I still work on them. Yeah. I still have a lot of Volvos. But they've gone up in the last couple of years. They've become collector cars. Right after they? I sold mine. Yeah, right. That's when you want to do it. You want to sell it before it peaks. That way I, I yeah. keep the guys working here. This yeah. way they can't retire. <laughs> and those are the factory wheels as well? No, these had uh, a, an aluminum and steel wheel optional yeah. or an all steel wheel with a small hubcap in the center. Okay, well let's, uh, let's take a look under the hood. George, open it up. As you said, nothing exotic, just the basic. Now this didn't have any more horsepower than the 122, did it? 
actually when it came out it did it had 115 horsepower okay. um, but you know you could take the head off this put it on a 122 there you have it right right okay um, they're all basically the same but it's a it's a bomb proof engine yeah um, these things you know Irv Gordon is what three million miles now yeah we had uh, Irv Gordon on the Tonight Show when I did Irv Gordon is the man who's driven an original car more miles than anybody else in the world. I think he has three million miles on, on his Volvo. And he drove it to, from Long Island to the Tonight Show to put another 4,000 on it. Of course it right he did. There. So that was kind of fun. That shows you the durability of these cars. Now this car was pretty rough, wasn't it? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Been yeah. this it, it's gone through an extensive, expensive, and very authentic restoration. Well documented by the owner. A lot of Swiss cheese on the bottom of this car. Yeah. And who can tell you the whole story is the owner, Bill Krastic. Bill, come on in. Let's meet Bill. Guys, thanks, thanks a lot. George, thank you. Hey, Bill, how you doing? I'm fine, thank you, Mr. Leto. How are you, Sal? Nice to see you, and uh, thanks for bringing your car. I think it's safe to say, just looking at all the documentation and stuff, you're a Volvo nerd, would you say? Well, to a degree. To a, a, degree. Classic nerd. Yeah, and, uh, a classic car nerd. Classic car nerd, long-suffering wife, the whole deal. Exactly. Yeah, she yeah. allowed me to refinance the house in order to buy this thing. Really? Yes. Well, if you can find a girl like that, marry her, as Leah Coco would say. Wow, Thank that's you. pretty good. Thanks. So you remortgage the house to finance this. <laughs> yes, sir. Okay, that is a smart move, I think. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, obviously, this is the love. Were you a huge fan of the TV show? Yes. Uh, when I was younger, I lived in San Jose, California, mm -hmm. uh, originally from New Jersey. The show used to be shown at 11.30 at night on Sunday. Yeah. So when my parents were asleep, I turned on the TV set right. and watched Roger Moore. And it was just a fantastic show. And then my father caught me one night. And he said, well, he says, what are you watching? So he started watching. He goes, wow. And it became both of our kind of bonding. Parent now, bonding. I'm guessing you have all the DVDs of the show. <laughs> Three times over. Yeah, and you have the Saint shirt. Of course. Okay, you have the whole, is, is there a club of, 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 of Saint people? Yes, uh, it was started in the 40s, actually. Yeah. It still goes on to this day. It was yeah. done as a charity, and oh, it okay. still exists. So, yes, well, sir. I guess it is an old character, isn't it? Yes, sir. Uh, the books originally started in 1928 uh, by Leslie Charteris right. and continued writing into the 70s. So very popular. First movies with George Sanders, and then the definitive version is really Roger Moore. Right. Because, you know, a lot of people don't know this, because I, I know this. When they started The Saint, they originally went to Jaguar. Mm -hmm. And they said, hey, we'd like to use the new XKE in this TV show we're doing. But the XKE was so well received, Jaguar was like, oh, no, we don't need uh, fine. We do fine. We don't need to do that. Aston Martin kind of did the same thing. They kind of with James Bond, they weren't going to give him a car. But right. then they did, and you saw what happened. And of course, this car really made Volvo. It was sort of under the radar until it got on the Saint, and then it was seen as this sexy, kind of cool sports car. Definitely. It was shown in over 80 countries, including behind the Iron Curtain, which is right. extremely rare in the day. So to see a, a hero zipping in his white sports car week after week was tremendous publicity from Volvo. That's the second time we've done zipping here. We had it with Matt. There seems to be something in, in the wall. We, we've done six years of this show about ever saying zipping once, and here we are twice using the same word. Now, I am at, now do you play the theme song while you drive the car? Oh, my God. <laughs> my wife's smiling over there. Uh, okay. Yes, yeah, I do yeah. have a uh, there's a four CD okay. set, too. Yes, sir. Okay. Okay. You have to understand there's a certain type of car. Car people know exactly what this is. I have a friend with a DB5. The only thing on the radio, na, 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 and just plays it all day long. That's the only thing he plays. You either get it or, or you don't, really. Um, so how many miles on this car? Do you drive it quite regularly? Is it a showpiece uh, prior to in the living room, that kind of deal? No, actually, I drive it. Uh, it has 116,000 miles. It had five owners after Sir Roger Moore, okay. one being the actor Martin Benson, who was in Goldfinger. Right. And then when we had it uh, restored, I do drive it to shows. I had it up in New Jersey, actually, and drove the 400 miles to Virginia. It does excellent on the motorway or highway. Yeah. 75 in overdrive. It's smoothly running. Now, you're a school teacher. Yes, sir. Now, do your students even know what the Saint is? Do they just think it's an old Volvo? They just think it's an old, old Volvo. Volvo. Yeah, yeah. 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 So yeah. it's time for a new Saint, I'm afraid. Yeah, yeah. So if you want to impress chicks over 60, this is the car to have. We have yeah. another car for that. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, uh, well, all right. So let, let, let's let's take us over the what's the word? Anorak facts over this car. Uh, we uh, m we mentioned the wheels before. But I think we were incorrect. Those, uh, 
Tell me about the wheels. Certainly. These wheels were reproductions done by Mini Light when we did the restoration of the mm -hmm. car. Uh, as Matt mentioned previously, this car needed a lot of work done. Right. The original wheels were still on it. They were made out of magnesium, right. the original Mini Light wheels. Magnesium, after 40 years, tends to deteriorate. Right. And unfortunately, if you have them tested and they're cracked, they will not give you back the wheels. So Mini Light made us, specifically for this car, a specially machined set. Okay, so that sounds have. like, of the mortgage of the house, that probably sounds like the bathroom and the kitchen. Mm, okay, yeah, That is correct. Wheel. All right, bathroom and the kitchen do the wheel. And we still have okay. this four, this set of four, as a matter of fact. Yeah. One's actually in the trunk. Now, something that I know, just because I, uh, there's a little fan back here. Yes. And that was put in to cool the driver or the actor during filming rather than spring for air conditioning for the car. <laughs> they put a little fan back there. Yes, they so, did. So that was not obviously a Volvo. That was just put in the, in the TV version of the car. By the studio. They, this car was used in the studio a lot. Yeah. And so in order to keep it cool under the lights, as we are right now, they would have that fan on. They also added a little gauge on the dash. There's a thermometer there that will let you know how warm it was. Okay. Yeah, so that was now, We've done movie cars, and oh, I mean, every General Lee from the Dukes of Hazard just beat to crap. I mean, movie cars are just treated horribly. Uh, was this treated, well, it, it was Roger Moore's own car, so I imagine it got a little more care. And it, was it very rough when you got it? It was. It had gone through, since Sir Roger and Martin Benson, it went through several owners, had 116,000 miles. And as your uh, mechanic mentioned earlier, the Volvos do tend to rust in certain areas, and this yeah. one was no exception. So. Now, was it, when you got it, was it the Saint car and that made it really valuable? Or was it just an old Volvo that just happened to be used on a TV show, The Saint? This one was known as the Saint car. Everyone who owned it knew what it was in the okay. provenance. Uh, the original English logbook actually has his name on it, and that traveled with the car. But nobody really else took care of it until you got it. And that's correct. It was sitting languishing, actually, uh, in a warehouse. Languishing? Oh, man. Hey, I've added the zippy. Yeah. Uh, and it, it was uh, literally sort of rotting away at that point. Uh, the owner knew what it was, but he had so many other vehicles, he uh, didn't put any time into it. Right, right. So. Well, it's nice it's gone to a, a caretaker who cares about it as much as you do. I imagine you've tried to do everything exactly as it was? Are there any modern updates? There's no disc brakes or anything of that nature? No, sir. I have everything is original uh, as much as could be uh, done. The metal work, we did have to replace some panels. Mm -hmm. However, the interior, when you sit in these seats, which you will a little bit later, maybe we'll, if we go for a ride, those are the original seats that Roger Moore sat in. I mean, my buttocks will sit where Roger's buttocks were? Not only that, wow. but Shirley Eaton actually sat in both as well from Goldfinger, the wow. actress oh, in this car. Eaton. Wow, okay. Yeah, so that's even better. Well, very cool. Very cool. Well, I am buttockly challenged, and that'll be fun <laughs> to uh, to give it a shot. Uh, let's see what else have we got here. Um, oh, did this have disc brakes in the front? Yes, sir. Yes, yeah, so it did have disc brakes in the front. Yeah. And it has a uh, safety. Volvo was always big on safety, and it has the three-point seat belts. Okay. Uh, Volvo had put those in their car since the late '50s, so they were ahead of their time. So it's very modern in that respect. Well, let's take a look at some pictures of the restoration. This will show you how rough the car was. Was it done here or in England? It was done in England. Okay. It was done by in, in Barry St. Edmund by Restore, who actually I heard of from Irv Gordon, whom you mentioned earlier, the yeah. three million mile Volvo man. Okay, he, I, I used to have a place in Bury St. Edmund. Really? Over on Connors Road, yeah. <laughs> That's interesting. Okay, so how long did the restoration take? It took about nine months. Well, and that's fairly quick. Fairly quick. Uh, we had to source parts from Canada, from the U.S. We were wow. looking for only NOS parts, and we did find them, but they're all over. So we shipped everything over to England. So you were in New Jersey, or, I mean, rather uh, Virginia. Virginia, just writing checks off to England. Uh, uh, taking, taking pieces of the house and, and exchange. My wife's still sitting over there, but okay. yeah, yeah. I, I, I sold a lot of stuff on eBay. Okay, <laughs> so you bought it in England, it, w it was in England, okay. I I'm surprised no English enthusiast didn't go crazy and take it away from you. I'm totally surprised of that as well, Because honestly. the show was much bigger there. Here yes. it was a TV show, over right. there it was Oh my God, it was like a lifestyle thing. It was, it was like James Bond on TV, basically. Exactly, you only had two channels in England also, so yeah. uh, it was very, very popular, yes sir. Okay. Well, I am anxious to put my buttocks where Roger Moore's buttocks were and take this thing for a ride. Can we do it? We sure can. Cool. It's got a nice little throaty roar. Yeah, lusty as they say. Uh, zippy, as Matt says. Right. 
So you are actually sitting in the very seats that Sir Roger Moore and right. Shirley Eaton sat in as well. Which one was Shirley Eaton in Goldfinger? Shirley Eaton was the girl who was painted gold. Oh, okay. So. Wow, here, feel that acceleration. It's got quite a bit of power. It feels pretty strong, 415 horsepower. Yeah. Pretty uh, light car, isn't it? What do these weigh? They weigh about 24, 2,500 pounds. Oh, that's nothing, yeah, yeah and it's steel. And in 1967, they actually increased the power by three. So it has 118, and you can wow. feel that. Yeah, that extra three comes in handy. <laughs> You'll probably notice the steering's a bit on the heavy side, though. No, the steering doesn't seem heavy to me because I'm used to driving non-power steering cars. Ah. I don't find it heavy at all. Um, and this is basically a new car, isn't it? You've only got a few thousand miles on it since the restoration, correct? About 2,000 miles. Did you do the engine or no? Yes, oh, oh the okay. engine was completely redone okay. in the UK. And inside the car, you really don't hear. No, and it's really a timeless sort of design. It's still a very pretty car. Certain cars look dated. You know, Lincoln's from the 50s and early 60s really look dated, you know, with all the angles and the goofy headlights and all that. Whereas this thing, you could make some version of this today and it would still uh, look reasonably contemporary. Yeah. This is probably the 1800, the greatest Volvo ever built, would you say? I would say so. It's the yeah. most uh, popular the as most far iconic, as enthusiasts. Yeah. Yeah. You know, yeah. a lot of people think they want a sports car. What they really want is a grand touring car. Yes. Because it has it gives the best elements of both. You've got a nice, comfortable ride. You've got really good weather sealing. You don't hear a lot of wind noise. It, uh, heat errors are incredible because mm -hmm. it's Swedish. And uh, they're very dependable. And it's reasonably sporty. And you'd yes. save on insurance because this is technically a four-seater car. Right. Even though it, nobody with legs could fit in there. Roger Moore's children used to ride in the back of this. Oh, yeah, yeah. that's funny. When he drove it home. We're going to have Bill show us the dashboard now and go over all the gauges. And uh, it's a pretty dashboard. Let's take a look. Now that's the, is that the original radio? Well, actually it was, uh, but it was removed for a number of years. Yeah. When we were restoring the car, we located the third owner, who at that time was about 87 years old, a Mr. Douglas Coles. Right. And he came over to the restoration while the car was being done. He says, I still have the radio on my shelf. Oh. So he gave it back to us, free of oh, charge, and nice. we installed it back. It's a radio mobile radio. And we have here a uh, cigarette lighter. Which was used by Roger Moore thoroughly because okay. he was a heavy smoker. As a matter of fact, there is a melted uh, place right above the ashtray. The second owner, uh, <laughs> Martin Benson, said, nope, that was Sir Roger's work. Okay, and there's your ashtray right <laughs> ashtray, there. Ashtray, yes, sir. And this was the uh, temperature gauge that was added by the studio. That's and these, were these standard, or is this and Volvos, or was this added later? These were added uh, for the spotlights that were used for the, uh, right. uh, on, the, on the bumper, and the other one was used for the, the fan. And this one? And that is the actual heater fan. That's the itself. heater fan, this yes. one here? That's the wiper switch. Wiper switch, and the choke is underneath. Choke is underneath, yeah, they hit it underneath there. And here we have a clock. Clock, which is correct twice a day. Right, and uh, oil pressure. Oil pressure. And uh, fuel gauge, and of mm -hmm. course, speedometer, water, uh, oil temperature. Correct. Which is very European. Americans never did oil temperature. No. And the tachometer is not working. Horn, of course, in the middle. Uh, right here is what? These are your headlights? You have your headlights. And there's there. another switch down here. What is that one? Uh, that's a good question. Oh, uh, that's the electronic uh, antenna. Okay. Oh, of course. And your ignition. And right here, which is kind of cool, this is your uh, your uh, overdrive switch. You'll see the light right here when it go like this. It kicks in. You feel the car shift to a, a, essentially a fifth gear. This is what it seems to do best. You get it up on the highway and you put it in overdrive and boom, you feel it kick in and you just sort of cruise. And now you're getting about 30 miles to the gallon, believe it or not, yeah, in a yeah. 1967 yeah. Grand Touring car. You know, I have so many cars, I don't, a lot of people get really screwed up with right-hand drive. It doesn't bother me at all. Does it bother you? I don't notice really any big difference. No, it doesn't. As a matter of fact, when I was working my way through school, I was a rural delivery mail carrier in New Jersey. Oh, okay. And we had right-hand drive scouts, International oh, right. Harvester yeah, yeah. Scouts. Yeah, those things are pretty slow. And, and back in the day, they would make this specifically for mail carriers. Yeah. So that's how I learned to shift with the left hand and drive on that side of the road. Well, that's pretty cool. 
I want to thank uh, George, our mechanic, Matt Stone, of course, Bill and his long-suffering family. Uh, <laughs> boy, this is a real thrill. I, you know, when you see a car on TV, you never think I'll actually get to drive that one. And the same seats that Roger Moore sat in. So I hope you learned a little something about 1800s. And uh, this is an appreciating asset. These cars are going to go up. So if you find one, buy it now because they're not getting cheaper. Bill, <laughs> thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mr. Leto. Appreciate see you it. next week. Mm-hmm. <laughs>